Scotland, a country renowned for its mysterious locks and ancient castles. The perfect country for a road trip. I'm on a journey to visit some of Scotland's remarkable landmarks, including some of the country's rarely talked about hidden gems. My journey will take me deep into the Scottish Highlands, stopping to swim in locks, drive between mountains, stand at the foot of the tallest mountain in the United Kingdom, and discover eerie shipwrecks. Join me on a four-day road trip through Scotland. Our journey starts when we cross over the border from England into Scotland. The most direct route into the Highlands is to follow the motorway straight up and past Glasgow. However, we were forced to divert due to an accident and ended up taking the scenic route to Edinburgh. Now, away from the motorway, Scotland's beautiful scenery began to open up to me, from craggy hills to dense woodlands. It was a long journey north from Edinburgh to our destination on Loch Tay. My base for the next few days was a village called Kenmore, perched upon the shores of the sixth largest loch in Scotland, Loch Tay. Good morning from Kenmore. We arrived late last night. The journey, which normally takes four hours, actually took eight because there was a bad accident on the motorway and we had to take a detour. Today is our first proper day. Just going for a nice walk up the, to the Tay Forest Park. And then later I'm hoping to swim in the loch if the weather is still nice. Kenmore is a beautiful village with an abundance of things to see and do. But I'll talk more about my favorite things to do in Kenmore later on in the video. First, I was gonna try something I'd never done before. I made my way to Kenmore Beach for a dip in the loch. It would be the first time I'd ever swam in fresh water outside of the tropics. I was nervous, but excited. I'd heard good things about cold water swimming, but I also knew it could be dangerous. Just yesterday, several people died while swimming in Scotland's famous Loch Lomond. As I made my way down to the beach, I noticed that the beach and shallow waters of the loch were absolutely heaving with people who looked like they didn't notice the cold of the water. Maybe it wasn't that cold after all. I dipped my feet in and instantly felt the shock of the water. Nope, it was definitely cold. Oh my goodness. Though maybe not quite as bad as I'd been expecting. Oh my god, it's cold. It took a while, but at last I mustered up the courage to submerge myself completely within the icy water. Okay, three, two, one. The cold was a shock, but at the same time, it was exhilarating. following day, it was time for the next part of my road trip. Today, I would be heading west to see two of the Highlands most scenic sites, Glencoe and Fort William. The drive took us past towering mountains and dense areas of woodland. We drove alongside the small but beautiful Loch Tula. And then the more quirky, Loch Na Ha Achlays, which translates to Loch of the Armpit due to its irregular shape. Before long, we were driving through Glencoe. 
a gorgeous valley famous for more than just the scenery. This beautiful valley has a dark history. The Glencoe Massacre took place in 1691 when King William III sent 128 soldiers to stay with the MacDonald clan of Glencoe, who had been a few days late to sign their oath of allegiance. After 12 days with the MacDonalds, the soldiers turned on them, killing 38 of them. Driving through Glencoe with the sun shining down, it was hard to believe that these hills were once the backdrop to such a violent scene. These days, Glencoe is popular amongst both hikers and film lovers, as this area has made an appearance in countless movies. At the end of Glencoe Valley is Glencoe Village, perched on the shores of Loch Leven. We drove alongside the 31 mile long Loch Linny until we found ourselves in Fort William. Fort William is often referred to as the hiking capital of Scotland, situated just below the iconic Ben Nevis, the tallest mountain in the United Kingdom. As much as I'd love to have climbed Ben Nevis, my schedule was a little tight, and so I ventured slightly further up the loch to see one of Fort William's hidden gems. This is Corpac Beach. It is famous for its eerie shipwrecks. Unpredictable weather in the highlands means it's common for boats to be ripped from their mooring spots and become wrecked. As if that wasn't chilling enough, the name Corpac roughly translates to field of corpses in Gaelic. The wind here is crazy. And the first shipwreck here is this little sailing boat. See all the poles, oh, some sheets in there. Around to the other side. I couldn't find any information online about this boat, so I could only assume it was caught up in a vicious storm and beached. I found it creepy walking around the sailing boat, especially as I could see right inside it, from the wheel to storage boxes, old bedding and even a toilet. I have a mixed relationship with abandoned things. On the one hand, I find them fascinating and always want to explore them. On the other, I find their eeriness almost overwhelming, especially when seeing such human objects, such as bedding. But this little sailing boat wasn't the main reason I came to Corpac Beach. The real star of the beach was the Corpac Wreck, also known as the Old Boat of Cowell. Here we are at the shipwreck. This is called the Old Cowell Shipwreck. This was a fishing boat catch herring and mackerel, built in 1975. Then in 2011 there was a huge storm in Fort William and this ship was torn from the port and ended up here on the beach. After a long day on the road, it was time to head back to Kenmore and spend the final day of my road trip visiting some of Loch Tay's remarkable sites. I hope you enjoyed my road trip. If you'd like to see my top five things to do in Kenmore and Loch Tay, where I explore the area's waterfalls and abandoned castles, check out this video here.